two strong individuals that we've been there with Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. That, I think that's what separates AJ from everybody else. AJ knows when to be vicious and you can see it in his eyes when he truly wants to kill somebody. Give me some travel tips here. If I'm going to visit Nigeria for the very first time, what do I need to do? <laughs> now, I would say bring cash. Cash is king in Nigeria. What's the best piece of advice that you got that you now carry with you? Enjoy it. So first of all, we got a new setup in the office here. We painted the walls here. I've got, well, we've got a big bear spot here. So if you have any ideas of what we should put there, drop it in the comments below, let me know. We've also got the mic set up right here, at least for now. And I don't know, I think I'm liking this. It's like a real throwback to my radio day that started my career in radio. And we've got like this whole thing here, like, hey, welcome back to the show. So good to have you with us here. You know, like total radio voice thing. So it's funny because I interviewed MVP back during WrestleMania and we talked about Omos and he told me Omos is WWE's giant for the next 10 to 15 years. Fast forward to now, we're talking to Omos right before his big match at Backlash with Seth Rollins. And man, I don't think that people fully grasp just how big Omos is. Like if we're just talking height here, he's bigger than Undertaker, he's bigger than Kane, he's bigger than Big Show, he's bigger than Matt Morgan. He's bigger than a lot of these giants. And the sky really is the limit for him. So good to be able to find out who the man behind the Nigerian giant is. But first off, a big thank you to Morgan & Morgan for supporting us on this video and completely completely changing the game when it comes to submitting an injury claim. If you've ever been in a car accident, you've probably thought to yourself, hiring a lawyer to help with this insurance claim is just so much work. I mean, you've got to find the lawyer, you've got to fill out all the paperwork, you've got to deal with all those meetings. I mean, it's just such a hassle, but not anymore with Morgan & Morgan submitting an injury claim is so easy. Morgan & Morgan has modernized the injury law process so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without ever having to leave your couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records and doctor bills all from your phone. You can even text your attorney without ever having to go into an office. When you're injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things that you should do. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is so easy. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they were injured in an accident. So if you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can file a claim in eight clicks or less, and you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com slash CVV or pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. Now, please welcome the one, the only, the Nigerian giant, Omos. So Omos, so good to see you. Life must be uh, pretty good for Omos. You're coming off of this match with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. And now you got Seth Rollins coming up at Backlash. Man, life is wonderful, man. I remember when, you know, me, me and I spoke with my business partner, Andy P, and we had a couple of ideas of what we wanted to do. And it seemed like the universe heard what we were planning for and is giving us those gifts in high stick matches. And now we are truly grateful. This is what I think is so interesting about you. And I'm a big believer mm -hmm. that things in life happen for a reason at the time Absolutely. that they're supposed to happen. Absolutely. You had, were supposed to have a WWE um, tryout in 2014 and because of you know various different circumstances that didn't happen. Do you think about what life would look like had that uh, happened at that time? I do, but I don't think I was mentally ready for it. I always think back to, you know, back then and, you know, what I, when I didn't come for the trial, what I, everything I had to go do in that four-year time span. And I think I needed to go through that growth and truly try and give my best to basketball and for, for it to come to a full stop before I jumped into wrestling because I don't think if I just came at that point in time, I think I'll have, I'll have to have some Oh, what if I did this in basketball? What if I did mm. this? But I truly exhausted all my options. I was to the point where there's really nothing else for me to do. And I, I, I did it to pivot in my life, you know? And so, so it happened to be that, you know, wrestling was present, presented to me. And I fell in love with it on the first tryout I ever had, I ever got into the ring. And it was, you know, love at first sight. Like truly love at first sight. What was your first introduction to the WWE and the pro wrestling? Like, is it something that's popular in Nigeria? Oh, to be honest, I, I didn't think it was until when I went back home last year. 
And I, I truly got to understand the magnitude of fans we have, not just in Nigeria, but just all over Africa as a whole and how people, individuals watch it, you know, I came back home last year for the first time in 14 years and just having regular day workers seeing me on the streets and saying, oh my, so much. And I'm kind of shocked because I wasn't expecting that type of reception. But uh, like, it went down to meeting, you know, the the the, the current vice president you know, of Nigeria and like his kids are watching the pay-per-view, you know, wow. this is when, you know, right before, um, after we did, uh, we in Saudi last year, Bron and I, and, you know, go back, going back home and the, the, the president's like, we saw you, what you doing here? I'm like, came here to see my family and, you know, it's pro WWE, but we just saw you this, you know, a couple of days ago in Saudi Arabia. I'm just like, wow, like this, like, I did not wow. know this, but it, it is extremely popular back home, extremely popular. I think they even have people... a they even have a um it's called Jumbo on the on on the cable network there and they, it's like a twenty four seven programming for WWE. You can watch WWE twenty four seven every day. Man, I think that people think Omas is your real name. What's the story behind the name Omas? <laughs> so fun fact is Omas is one of my last most my last name, right? So my last name is Omog Behim, which is actually very difficult to understand. Yeah. And when I was a kid, I don't know what caught up, you know, what got in my dad's head and he wanted to change it to Omas. So for a while, for like 10, 12 years of my life in Nigeria, my last name was Omas. And then about two years before I well, when I started playing basketball and before I came to America, my dad said, you know what? I want to change it back to Omog Behim. And, you know, as it goes, you know, you follow him out of the house and we all change our last names back to Omog So Omos is my last name, but it doesn't go by it anymore. I don't think that people realize how big you are until they see you, like, live at a WWE event. Yes. I'm curious, at what age did you become six feet tall? <sighs> I think I was 11 years old. I think that's, I was 11 that is old. not fair, by the way. I'm sorry, man. You know, I, you know, I don't make the rules. I just follow, I don't follow them. So whatever you was giving to me, I just stick in mind with it. So I was, I'll say about, about 11. Wow. Okay. And then, like, at what point are you seven feet tall? Um. So at 11 years old, I was about six feet. And then I think by the time I was 13, I was, so I went in like, two, in like a two-year span, I went through a... Uh, Seven inches, seven inch growth spurt. So by the time I was 13, I was six, seven. And that's when I started playing basketball. And then by the time I was 15, I was like six, eleven, seven foot. Wow. Now is mm -hmm. the same thing that you had, is that the same thing that Andre had? The growth on your so, pituitary gland? So yes, similar but different. Mine okay. is different because those guys they had they just had a argumentary, right? Which is the which is the tumor, which is the tumor on your pituitary gland. Hmm. I I have that, but also have gigantism, right? Which is had, and also something else called partial Christian disease. And from all I said, it was I was the first case I'd ever seen that had those three diseases together. Because they're, they're, they're pretty much all diseases that, that make you large. And yeah. I kind of have like all the you know I'm like a uh, like a rich spot, you know. <laughs> I had all I had all the fixings, and it wasn't all when they found it. I had all like uh, I've been studied by this uh a medical journal about my condition to help all the individuals, the kids that have a similar, a similar case like I do. You know, I won't have the opportunity, you know, to for, you know, residents to talk to me and ask about my experience, you know, what it's like to have all the disease because it's rare that you find someone who has palsy like I do, so yes. But this isn't just like something that makes you tall. Like this is something that if not treated, I mean, you oh, end up it's, it, it, it's, it's dying, very right? fatal. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So for me, it's just like a thing where like I have to monitor my. They call it it's called the IGF one, which is your growth hormones. Yeah. So I have to monitor mine pretty much every three to four months, and I'm pretty much on the medication every day to help stop my body from using the hormones. If not, and if I don't do that. I keep on growing, which I don't want to do anymore. I'm, I'm okay and I'm satisfied at what I have. <laughs> you know, so do you, do you have to duck to walk into uh, like every room now? Pretty much every, every room, maybe it's it, and it's become even when the doors are about like ten foot tall, it's just still a natural reaction to me where I just have to do it just in case. You know, I don't want to like you know what I'm fine and I go in there, keep my head and which has happened a couple of times, but. I always try to make sure I duck. It's just become a natural instinct now. Okay, how about sitting on an airplane? What does that look like? There's a video 
the MVP posted, I think, last year of what it was like getting out of my seat, going to the bathroom, using the bathroom, and coming back. And it's it's like uh, being in the hut, <laughs> for lack of better terms, you know, because you know the, those those planes are designed for a human being like me. So that's how to you know make bests. <laughs> you know, I always had to, you know, I figure, you know, my life has been a thing of where I have to figure out, okay, how do I maneuver into small and tight spaces that aren't necessarily designed for me? Man, who were some of the big men that you looked up to when you were a fan growing up? Oh, man. I can't go without saying Undertaker. The Undertaker, man, and I, both, both, both on, you know, watching him in the ring and as an individual, I should have such great admiration for him. Um, Kevin Nash, um, Razor Ramon, when he rests in peace, I actually miss him a lot. Um, because, you know, he, you know, I've had, you know, since been in this business, I've had the privilege of having such good mentors who would call me and give me advice. Um, who else? Mark Henry, um, the Big Show. You know, those are, this is the guys, you know, that I've, you know, watched a lot of Kane and just try to take a little bit out of how they work. And implemented to so how I work, you know. A lot of people don't know this, but a lot of people see me do the snake eyes big boo. It's that little take his famous moves, you know, that everybody does. And I just said, you know what? I think you know, I've earned the right that I can do that with his permission. I was able to. So, you know, a way to honor people who I truly look up to. Look, I think that people think Brock Lesnar is a big dude. And then when you <laughs> see you guys in the ring together <laughs> at WrestleMania 39, <laughs> You make him look so small, but what I think is a true testament to Brock's strength is he picks you up for that F five like you weigh nothing. That that is, uh, uh, I was telling somebody the other day. I think the two strongest individuals I've ever been in the ring with, Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. I like I I have no idea how those guys are. I mean, they they are in such, and this is going to sound very coming for me because I'm I'm also a physical specimen, but it is such physical specimens and phenomenal athletes well you talk about phenomenal i mean i think i'd be remiss to not bring up aj styles i'm really curious what's something that you do in the ring now that is something that you learned from working with aj being vicious that i think that's what separates aj from everybody else aj knows when to be vicious and you can see it in his eyes when he truly wants to kill somebody and that is what i learned from him is you know, when he when he was also under him and he was mentoring me, which is still dusty today because he's one of my closest friends. Um, like looks like you want to kill somebody. That is the art. It's not about what you do, it's it's what's in here and what you convey in your eyes. And I, that was something I, I learned from him and I still do today, looking like, okay, I'm gonna kill this guy. Like I wanna murder him. I feel like you're just getting started in WWE. <laughs> like you really are. And, and you've already accomplished so much. So if we look ahead now, five years, 10 years plus, what are some of the long-term goals you have for yourself in WWE? I mean, of course, my WWE champion, you know, that's, that's I think, at the top of the list. You know, I had, I had a, when I first started, I had a, uh, goals I wanted to accomplish. And I think I, I've met some of those goals. People I wanted to wrestle before they said goodbye. And things I wanted to do, like, you know, being a WrestleMania. And I've had the privilege to be a WrestleMania three times. You know, one winning it as a WWE champions with AJ Styles, yeah. going solo wrestling Bobby Lashley last year in Dallas, and then starting the show with one and only Brock Lesnar. So I think there's a lot of plans left and a lot of things that I can actually have to achieve. But I think at the top of the list is becoming, you know, holding that gold over my head yeah. and saying, yeah, here, look at me now. I'm the biggest, baddest son of a gun you ever seen. Now we here, you know. So that's, that's at the top of the list, you know. Yeah. Give me some travel tips here. If I'm going to visit Nigeria for the very first time, what do I need to do? <laughs> first things first, make sure you're vaccinated. Okay. <laughs> That's the first thing you do first. Uh, I would say figure out a good amount of money you want to spend. Um, so I never suggest you swipe your credit cards for anything. I would say bring cash. Cash is king in Nigeria. Um, like U.S. cash? Yeah, U.S. cash, you can change it back home. You can change it once you get there. Find okay, to okay. Or just make sure you bring cash. You don't need your credit cards, debit cards, the straight cash. You have a budget of how much you're going to spend. Do that and um, find the, I'll say, 
stay on the island, Lagos, which is like you know, say Lekki, Lagos Island, Victoria Island, but just make sure you get a really nice hotel on the islands. Um, the third thing is uh, if you can afford it, that is. At least get more security that can help you navigate through Lagos because they always call. I'm not a, I'm, although I'm from Lagos, I'm not a fan of Lagos. It's, it, it's like New York on steroids. And I can't stand that because it's just so many people and it's overcrowded. There's lots of traffic. So you just need to find someone who can help you move with this space. And that's pretty much it. That's all you really need. And make sure you, I don't mean everyone knows, but make sure you travel, travel with the, uh, a uh, uh, thing is thing you put into the outlet to so you can charge your phones and all. Oh that, all yeah, that. the the uh, power converter. The converters, the power converter. Yeah, yeah. So, it was basically want to have one of those. So, <laughs> and if you're a gamer, make sure you bring your games. Keep something at the same the hotel. Um, what else? Very important. The battery pack. The charge a portable battery pack. And that's what aside from you, who's the most famous Nigerian that we might know? I man, it's a lot, man. It's a lot of things. Yeah, it's there a are lot. a lot. Yeah, it's a lot, man. Go to UFC, Israel Adesanya, um, Kamar, Kamar Usman, go to Hollywood, um, John Boyega, uh, Damson Injus from Snowfall. It's, it's a lot of Nigerians doing a lot of a lot of great things, man. So it's it's a it's a lot, man. Everywhere, everywhere it's fun, yeah. and I see basketball. Same thing, you know. It's 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 truly an amazing time to see, you know, our, con our country put on the world map and all this yeah. great, you know. What would you say is the best piece of advice that you've received? You know, right before you were going to get onto the stage that you got on in WWE, what's the best piece of advice that you got that you now carry with you? Enjoy it. I think sometimes the, the, those moments are so are so huge that we forget to be the president, president and truly enjoy it and soak it in. And uh, you know, I always try to make sure whenever I go out there, I take my time and I truly absorb it and I truly, truly, you know, enjoy it and being the moment they be present. Because, you know, when you guys perform, as a performer, you get nervous, you get tense, and, you know, it's such like going on ahead. But so, and sometimes that takes away from just enjoying and understanding, like, understanding. I'm about to go in front of 5,000, 10,000 people who are going to either scream or boo me. And they're going to have an amazing time. And they're yeah. going to go crazy. Like that is an accomplishment accomplishment in and you know, of itself. So always make sure it's always be present and truly and just enjoy the moment. Yeah. Look, so many of the things that you did, you were getting over when there weren't any fans in the arena. So what was it like when you did get in front of fans for the first time and they knew who you were and they knew what you were all about? It was a lot of nerves because I think the first time I had a huge paper in front of friends, I think it was South, I think it was in SummerSlam in 2019, 2019, I believe, in Vegas. And that was, that was after, no, 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 no. Mania. It was Mania in Tampa. And it was, it was, uh, it was such a great experience for me because um, before I wanted to play basketball, I wanted to go pros. Obviously, that didn't happen. I had I had goals I wanted to accomplish. I went to college in Tampa, University of South Florida. I had goals I wanted to accomplish there, which, which I didn't get to due to health reasons and, and other things, right? And after I graduated in 2014, see, yeah, and then to go back there a couple of years later and to do what we did at the largest stadium in Tampa, yeah, but everybody in Tampa knew who I was, and they saw it. And to do that, there was it, it, it was it was like a, a full circle moment for me to go back there and do that, and it's true, and, it, and also an extremely emotional one because of a lot of what I went through happened in Tampa, like the stuff from my surgeries I did for my brains, the ACLs, everything, everything that kind of all the hurdle, all the large hurdles I kind of faced happened in Tampa. But to go back there and do what I did at WrestleMania, that was forever always been top of the list of, mm. you know, of that, of, you know, being there and then truly experiencing the crowd and seeing them go crazy. And granted, there was only 25, I think it was, it was only about 25% capacity due to, yeah. due to COVID. It was still like an experience nonetheless because I still feel the energy. I remember, you know, we had the introduction on the first day where they, they brought us out there to introduce us to the fans because the first time we're back since the pandemic. And I just remember going out there that I could just 
feel the energy from the audience and I got emotional. Then I came back there and I saw Kevin Nash and he just gave me a big hug. And I was just like, he just told me just leave me like, cause it was, it was, I was telling people that there's, there's no energy, like the, the energy that WWE fans bring to the arena, that there's nothing like, I don't care whether you play baseball, basketball, UFC, there's nothing like it. Like once you get in there, you experience it, you feel the energy of how passionate these fans are. Like it's, it's, it's truly different. And I remember, and I felt that for the first time, he gave him really good books right now, he gave me goosebumps. And I go back, I saw Kevin Nash in the hallway, and like, I, it, it comes to the point where I was emotional, that's how much energy I felt from the audience. And I was giving him a big hug, and he was just like, it's okay, because we just read. And, and it, like, I will never forget that moment. It's, it's, mm. it's such an amazing business, man. I, 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 we can go all day long about, you know, the business and all, but like, I, I truly love this business. Look, your journey is so inspiring and it's so cool seeing what you've been doing in the WWE. And I, I can't wait to see what's next for you. I end every conversation talking about gratitude because it's such an important part of my life. Uh, I always wake up, I say out loud three things that I'm grateful for and I do it before I go to sleep. What are three things in your life that you're grateful for right now? Ooh, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful to be able to do what I'm doing you know, which is extend people across the world and completely be in a creative space where I can actually be whatever, 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 whatever and whoever I want to be. Yeah. And thirdly, for my loved ones, my fiance in particular, my family, because those are the core of when things have gone sour, they've been there for me. So I'm truly grateful for those three things. Well, Lamas, such a pleasure to be able to spend some time with you and looking forward Thank you. to seeing you and Seth Rollins at Backlash. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Truly an honor to speak to you as well. The honor's mine. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you.